Alrighty, well, for, I guess, my own future reference and anybody else who happens to do this, I guess I'll show what I got going on here. If I can find... Here it is. So, this 68 GMC has a kind of like stock GM parts, disc brake conversion type deal. Because if you notice this one over here, the 62 Chevy has six lugs. This one should have six lugs, but it has five. And for anybody who hasn't already heard me repeat this, it has disc brakes on it from a 73. Uh, as I understand the story, because my dad was the one who did this about 20 years ago, you take the spindle from a 73, you keep the stock A-arms, and how you connect that spindle to those A-arms is you just use a 73 ball joint. So 73 ball joint and spindle, and then you have disc brakes. It's the stock A-arms and all that. It's just the spindle's the only thing that changed. And then also for the power steering, and I don't think we had, I think you might have to change the tie rod ends too. I think the tie rod ends might be different between the 67 to 72 and the 73. So I'm pretty, I, th I think that's how it works. So that, I think those are also tie rod ends from a 73. And then this has power steering from a 73. So it also has the 73 drag link and power steering box. So Delio is brake lines. So this brake line is for a 73. Those calipers are supposed to be for a 73. And in order to get this brake line, to, this brake line for a 73 truck to fit on a 73 caliper, I had to cut the corners of it off because originally it looked like that. But if you look at the face on the caliper, There you can kind of see it. The face on the caliper is a circle. So the corner of that square brake line would hit right there and right there. And you wouldn't be able to actually seat the brake line onto the caliper. So that is why I had to cut the corners of it off. Now, I don't know what the deal is. Everything online, Summit, Rock Auto, O'Reilly's, Advanced Auto, AutoZone, all say that this brake line should bolt onto those calipers, but it doesn't. So I'm not sure what the deal is with dealio is with that. But what this one did, and this is a two-year-old brake line, and the rubber completely and totally, because the brake line was sitting just kind of pretty much scrunched up. Something kind of like that, because this brake line is way, way, way too long. So eventually it just, which I, I, it shouldn't have done that. I really refuse to believe that a good brake line would have done that, but it did that. So I'm replacing that one, but I'm not replacing it with another one of those because I don't want to have to deal with this again. So what I got is the brake lines that I got on this side. I'm still working on the driver's side. Brake lines I got on this side, there you can see better, like that other, the big square one, it would be hitting all right there on the corner. But these brake lines I got, actually this one needs to come out here where it's not going to rub on the rim because that would suck. Okay, well I might have to work on the routing of that just a little bit, make sure it doesn't touch anything it doesn't need to touch but these brake lines are from a 73 caprice so they already have kind of the rounded end on them and they have this nice little boot deal on it to keep it from doing what the other one did and they are a good bit shorter than those ones from the 73 I tried putting a brake line on here for a 72 but apparently, whenever they went to disc brakes, or the trucks that had disc brakes in 72, the front metal brake line runs along here and comes out right down here. So you can run to the caliper with a real short brake line. 
On this one that had drum brakes, the brake line runs on the back side of the cross member. So with that 72 brake line, it was just it was just a bit too short. It was kind of tugging on the brake line and I didn't like that. So I'm gonna try these ones, see if I can get it routed the way I had earlier where it didn't touch anything. And I guess I will show this later. All right, I got it figured out. So, uh, whoops, wrong thing. Up there where the brake line uh, connects to that tab on the frame, it actually uh, locks the brake, it has a flat side on it and it'll lock the brake line so the brake line doesn't spin while you try and tighten up the uh, little, whatever, flare fitting up there. And so what I did is I turned, I turned the brake line like you would a radiator hose and clocked it over a half turn and that has it pulling the, uh, that has it pulling the brake line out of here because whenever the suspension came up, it definitely would have pinched the brake line in there. And then what I'll probably do is just zip tie this guy right here. Actually, I'll probably just leave it, honestly. I'll probably have to put something right there, zip tie something right there around it because it is touching the uh, top of the spindle right there. But really, I feel feel pretty good about that. Comes through, it's not gonna get pinched right there. It's not gonna get pinched in the spring like the other one wanted to do. So, good deal, gotta do the other one. Having to do here is, as you can see, this brake line that I, oops, brake line that I had on it is a lot thicker than the center there that I don't feel like getting right now. And so these banjo bolts were just a little bit too long. So what I'm having to do is cut just a little bit off of the end of it. So I put the, the die on here so that, uh, well one, my little, I'm just using a little handsaw because I don't want to have to have sparks everywhere. So that the, uh, this will help kind of keep the blade go straight. And then also in case the threads get a little bit messed up, I can just walk that right back off and it'll clean the threads up. And then I don't have to worry about trying to get a tap on something that has screwed up threads. And then I'll clean it really, really good and then put the other brake line on. Now that I got a little bit of the end uh, cut off, I'm gonna use a flat file to clean up that edge that's sticking up there. Focus on this, please. And then I'm gonna use a little rat tail file just to kind of clean up what metal got pushed in there and then I'll blow it out and clean it out really good with a little bit of card cleaner or something. But yeah, otherwise this thing is just too long to actually put any kind of pressure on it. It just bottoms out in the caliper. And I had to uh, trim some of the whatever this protective piece off. It's not structural to the brake line, it just helps to keep the brake line from kinking right here at the end. So it'll still do that, but without that little bit of rubber there, then it doesn't hit whatever the edge of the caliper as much, and it just makes it go on a little bit easier. All right, so it's been months at this point since the last clip with the brake lines. And I had to mess with it a little bit more, but I think I got it decent. So. What I think the deal is and why this was such a struggle is best I can gather the trucks that had drum brakes like this one and the trucks that had factory front discs had this brake line in a different place. So because this one had drum brakes, I think all the, well, I think all the ones that had drum brakes had the brake line back here just because it went straight to the drum right there and the I think that the ones that had factory disc brakes had that same metal line on the front of the cross member because that would make this whole thing with the brake line a lot easier. And I saw a truck from another guy who had factory front disc brakes on his and his brake line was on the front. So that's my theory on that. This I had to do completely different because there was no way I could move the brake line where it would not rub on this as the suspension, you know, maxed out up and down. So, uh, what I did was, oh, I'm just putting it under here, is right here, I have a piece of mechanics wire that wraps all the way around the brake line and then is just tight enough on the brake. It's not pinching the brake line by any means, but it's just tight enough on there where it won't slide on, it can't slide on the rubber line. 
and then it just wraps around here at the back. And all this is doing is keeping the brake line pulled away from this piece here. So, so far I haven't had any issues with that. And then just to make sure that I didn't actually accidentally rub through the brake line or have any issues, I put this little piece of conduit around it just so that if it was rubbing, it would be easier to see and then it wouldn't be tearing up the brake line. So that piece of wire there keeps pretty much this bend constant and having that allows it to always clear right here. So I've, I mean, I, several times I jacked it up, cranked the wheel left and right a whole bunch of times and watched it and then did the same thing, set it down, cranked it back and forth and kept an eye on it. And I've driven it now for several days and haven't, I can't see any wear marks on that conduit. So I think I finally got it to where it's not touching. It's not, if, even if I turn the wheel to full lock either way, I'm not pulling on the brake line. So that's good. And it was just a, a lot of uh, just kind of tweaking that, just the lengths on that mechanics wire there and just to get that bend just right. But this was finally how I think I've wrapped this up and finished this. The other side is pretty much just the exact same deal. So far, everything's been working out good. Not any weird things going on with it. So we will call this one a wrap.